Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I present the DCX, the McDonnell Douglas Delta Clipper Experimental. It was the original grasshopper. It was supposed to go up and come back down. It was a test bed for an SSTO, but uh, that did not end up getting anywhere. But it demonstrated the capabilities that would eventually be used, of course, by SpaceX and also Blue Origin with New Shepard. In fact, uh, Blue Origin got some of the people who worked on DCX for their New Shepard uh, system. So, this launched 12 times uh, and there were 8 successes, 1 failure, and 3 partial failures, all in the mid-90s. And it's not particularly useful in its current format because it's just a grasshopper, but I thought about making it because it might be useful. And we are going to investigate some of that here today. And it consists of a few parts. I've got the body, and it's got the landing legs built in, so raise and lower. And it's got the nose, and that can open up, and then there's a payload adapter there. Uh, no decoupler right now. Right now, we're not going to carry any payload. And engines. Now, the custom engine... Oh, uh, flaps. Yes, it has flaps, actually. And I don't know exactly what to do about them. I haven't made a whole lot of control surfaces, so they're not quite working right, I don't think. But we'll, we'll look at that in flight. But I made a special engine. I didn't mark it as RO yet. Uh, it's the RL10A-5, and it has... Th these are its correct stats. Uh, 64.7 kilonewtons. It can throttle down to 30%. Uh, they were meant as landing engines. They had a nozzle ratio of 4, which is very low, meant for just surface stuff. And as a result, compared to other RL10s, they have negligible I ISP uh, efficiency. So seven, uh, 373 in vacuum, 343 at sea level, and uh, I gave them the usual 10 ignitions for an RL-10. So there's four of those at the bottom here. And I used the uh, available numbers for the mass. Uh, I got that it was an empty mass of 9.1 tons. So we are exactly 9.1 tons. And it was supposed to be a fueled mass of 18.9. As we can see, we're just four kilograms shy of that. Now, one source said that the burn time uh, for this was 2 minutes and 7 seconds, but I suspect that that was the initial burn time, not including the landing burn, right? This is a grasshopper, so it's going to go up, and then when it comes back down, it'll do a landing burn. And I think when they said it was 2 minutes and 7 seconds, they skipped the uh, remaining fuel for the landing burn. I, I suspect that because otherwise we won't get to the right mass, so... Anyway, but we have a little catch here. We might want some RCS thrusters, and no diagram I saw showed where those were. I did have an indication of what they were. The reaction control thrusters, uh, for especially when the engines are off, uh, it says on Wikipedia, Wikipedia, uh, four 440-pound thrust gaseous oxygen, gaseous hydrogen thrusters. Well, basically, the only thing I've got are these RCS blocks that could work. They're, they're conformal. They're a little bit big, though. And what I'm going to do is put them down here. And I've already got a configuration for Hydrolox gas. These are a little bit strong. And um, if it's um, Hydrolox gas, it's not very efficient, 242. But that does increase our mass to more than it's supposed to be by about... 276 kilograms. So we'll keep that in mind, but it's not a big deal. Uh, what's a bigger deal is the center mass and center lift. And I don't know how to fix that. It's not like I can put wing surfaces somewhere. And I don't even believe it's true. So, right. Let's bring it outside and see what happens. Uh, well, that's what it looks like. It's not a very big thing. And... We'll see how high it goes. We'll see how high it goes. It didn't actually go as high as we're going to bring it. They were a little bit more cautious with it. But throttle up, SAS is on, and ignition. We have no clamps, so just start going up. So we'll get our apoapsis here and see how high it can get with its real load of hydrogen and oxygen. 
So on the bet that its initial burn was 2 minutes and 7 seconds at most, I'll shut it down with 12 minutes to spare, uh, 12 seconds to spare. For a landing, potential landing burn. Okay, so that's what we reserve for landing. We get to about 49 kilometers. If we take a look here, uh, we can get the COM and COL. Well, that's fine, but I mean, that's fine going up. It's a little bit of a problem coming down. I don't know if, like, if we deploy these, well, that'll help. Let's see, now we're going down. Yeah, that's not where we want the center lift. We want it on this side. I don't know. It doesn't have any visible descent mode. There's no indication of anything like that. Header tanks like Starship uses, nothing like that. I think we're pretty clear on it. Notice how it's completely different from in the VAB. That's another problem. We can never plan properly. It's using a lot of the propellant in order to keep itself steady right now. Um, oh, oh no. Oh no. No! Maybe I shouldn't have them deployed. I don't know. Let them just do things freely. Uh, I should have done some action grouping. The problem is sometimes they want to clip into the body and I don't know how to fix that. You know, when they try and control, they'll sometimes go inside, like that one. Oh. Uh, it's try- oh, oh, uh, it can. It's got, it's got power. It's just not going to be quite there. Oh gosh, maybe we can do a flip, <laughs> maybe we can do, yeah, we can light the engines and try to control it once we get low enough. It doesn't go very fast down, it's got, hold on, let me turn off the RCS because we're not going to have enough left over. Oh, I ripped it apart. Uh, yeah, but that, that wasn't feeling quite right. Definite issues there. But, alright, the thing is, this isn't very useful. It's only getting to like 46 kilometers anyway. What are we going to do with that? We need something more robust. So, I mean, we could just scale it up. The problem is it has such a high dry mass right now that that's not very efficient. We can't send payloads to orbit like that if it's going to only have a fuel fraction of half that doesn't work with the rocket equation very well and the ISP of its engines aren't enough to make up for that I mean no nothing would make up for that really unless you're doing something very exotic so we need something completely different uh, we can we can posit that we have the same body, but different fuel. The problem is hydrogen is not dense. It takes up a lot of space. And so these RL-10A5s might not be the best engine given this body for this purpose if we want to actually do something useful with this DCX. And so one thing that came to mind was the Merlin engine because it's small. <laughs> I mean, it's very powerful and small. And so it can fit in those little slots or close to it. So let's see. And just about fits. I don't think we're gonna need more than two. Heck, I don't think we're gonna need two even. And I don't think we need the 1D++ because that's just more thrust. And thrust is actually something we don't need. In fact, if we could just fit one engine, I would, but I feel like we want roll control. So, taking out the hydrogen and putting in uh, the same volume of kerosene and oxygen, we end up with a whole lot more delta V. It's a lot heavier. Remember, it was 18.9 tons before. Now it's 38.9 tons. 
but it's got maybe 1,400 meters per second more delta V. It does that in one minute, uh, and its thrust weight ratio is super high. But all right, uh, let's see how high it gets. Okay, so this should be vigorous, and go. We can probably throttle down. Now, they didn't do this because they were trying to make an SSTO. And even though this gives more delta V, you're not going to end up having an SSTO with kerosene and oxygen. Not with a very good payload capacity, anyway. But maybe we're not going to do an SSTO. Technically, the requirement that uh, was being aimed for, the SDIO wanted a uh, suborbital recoverable rocket capable of lifting 3,000 pounds to an altitude of 457 kilometers. This still can't do it, 165 kilometers, but at least this gets to space, unlike the other DCX. I mean, of course, again, that DC it's just a test bed. It wasn't meant to do anything uh, like this yet. But the goal is to get into space and then open up the nose cone and then something in the nose cone can make orbit. Or it could just be a sounding rocket style deal. But you could put something in there to try and make orbit. And that's what we're going to do next. Though I'm not sure this is the best engine situation that we could have. Oh, okay. I did put those... Oh, oh right. They're hydrogen and oxygen, though. We have kerosene. We don't have any hydrogen. The RCS won't work at all. Whoops. And you can see very quickly that the RCS had done a pretty good job last time, even though ultimately it failed. Because this is already wobbling. The speeds are going to be pretty intense on this one. Oh, oh yeah, the Merlins had that problem where they like to explode. We have to do sort of a retro. Or was that a Merlin? No, I think that was the RC, one of the RCS ports. Well, where do the other RCS ports go? Uh, uh. I'm gonna do a pre-burn here. I don't think that helps a whole lot. The problem is these engines are way too powerful to make a very good landing with. We're almost going to be horizontal. Maybe we should land horizontally. That's an idea. Oh, vapor and feed lines. Well, shucks. Hold on. Uh. Uh. Oh, of course, stresses. Now, as I said, these Merlin engines might be a little bit too frisky. We basically have to throttle down right away, and uh, maybe f they're also a little bit on the heavy side. So maybe we can do better than 4,219 meters per second. Let's see. I have my Sheer Strut engine pack, and those are realistic engines. They could be done, but they happen to be in a thrust range that might be useful here. In particular, if we're going with kerosene and liquid oxygen, this 200-ish uh, kilonewton engine, that doesn't get very good ISP at sea level because it's a little bit more vacuum optimized. It's more like for a second stage. But gets 343 in vacuum is not too bad. If we get four of these, and we'll have to ignore the fact that the gas generator exhausts, which aren't really critical here are going into the body. Oh, so probably this kind of engine would only have one of those, not two. That's more of a Hydrolox thing to have two. Um, we get 4,442 meters per second and 39 tons overall. And let me just make sure that the fuel mixture is correct. Ah, we got 4,600. So that's a little bit more moderate. The thrust weight ratio makes a little bit more sense, and we can probably put a payload in. 
Now, what kind of payload can we do here? It has to fit inside that cone, which is a little bit restrictive. And we could do something like what they might actually do. We could put a star 37, for instance. They, uh... If I imagine what they might do, they might do a star 37. The problem is uh, the way the nose cone actually closes it doesn't give a whole lot of clearance for anything else. So we need the lightest possible, and this uh, staging is wrong right now, the lightest possible payload. Can we get, oh I need to reroute, let's reroute to this. That doesn't seem right. It's not telling me the truth about that up there. Well, see, now we're going to be going straight up with the DCX, right? So that's a catch. We need basically all of our orbital velocity from the payload. And that's 7,800, let's say. So here we're getting 5,800, which is not bad. But this is just the booster and it's not carrying anything. We want some kind of payload, so I'm going to keep it small, as small as possible, and to my mind that means Pioneer 3 dash or slash 4, 6.1 kilograms. Okay, but we need something else here that can propel it. And let's say I put on a 1 kilonewton thruster. That uses MH and Mon3. Oh, that's a little bit big in height terms. But that's 7,627 right there. Uh, it's just that this is a really bad form factor. Maybe we need, we need RCS anyway. Maybe we should just use pure RCS on that. As long as we know that we can get that kind of performance. Problem is RCS thruster blocks because they are not very uh, high chamber pressure tend to be physically very large. I think this is, this calls for a very special wasted tank. Oh, well, we don't want a seven minute burn time, and with these RCS thrusters, it's going to be even longer. So, all right, we have an interesting little RCS stage. But now we can't read our delta V, so it's got to be a mystery whether this is enough or not. And to be honest, if you look at how that nos uh, nose would swing, I was going to say nozzle, nose would swing, it would hit that thing. But fortunately, we don't have to worry about that in Kerbal. But we'll imagine that it opens up in two halves instead of just one. That would be better. So if it was hinged so that it opened up in two that might be better for this kind of payload and better for any kind of payload overall. And that's what they should plan in the, if they ever tried to do this. Now our RCS system down here is not good. Okay, so I've got some MH and MON3 inside the main tank. I've got little thrusters that can use it. That's mainly for when we uh, deploy the payload, we want to be pointing prograde, well not prograde, but intended prograde when we do that, and so we'll turn the vehicle for that prior to release of the payload. And in fact, uh, the real thing actually did go horizontal during the test flights before turning to land. Okay. Well, these can wait until... Here, I suppose. All right, so this is our advanced DCX. Let's see if it can deploy a payload into orbit. Okay, well, here it goes. Startle up, SAS is on, and ignition. Up goes the elevator. Oh, that, that plume is a little bit high. I keep Wanting to fix that. We actually probably want the RCS on the payload on at the same time as the SRB. 
So that'll be 12 seconds reserved. I mean, it doesn't have to be 12 seconds, but that's what we're doing right now. We'll wait a little bit. And we'll just pretend that this can be recoverable with the 961 meters per second it has left. And we are out of the atmosphere, so open up the nose cone. Oh, not prograde, sorry. Surface, let's just go zero. Might want a couple of degrees pitch. But actually, I don't think we need the time, I think. So this is a heck of a thing. Oh, oh, no, no, not that. Okay, just this. Whoa, camera. That's some G-forces. Be really entertaining to see what that peaks out at. We're already at 15, we've still got, <laughs> still got some time left. Okay, what was the peak? 32.3 Gs, folks. Okay, make sure that that's the right decoupler. All right. And it's all RCS now. I think we'll make it. Okay, there you have it. The DCX delivering a tiny, tiny payload to orbit. It's a six kilogram payload, so I guess that would be good enough for a six unit CubeSat. Um, but... Uh, but we do have some non-recoverable bits, right? We've got the Star 37, and we've got this stage. So that's a little bit of a sad thing. Uh, it's not an overall completely recoverable system. It's certainly not an SSTO. But interesting nonetheless. And with this interesting achievement, uh, I think I'll leave it here, and I'll work on further developments. I'm not... I don't know if I'm going to work on DCX in particular, but maybe what they would have led up to. But there are other things too, you know, there are other things. We'll see. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.